Hey, what's going on YouTube? This is Jay Xavier Sports, and today I will be presenting my second full seven-round NFL mock draft for the Jacksonville Jaguars. Now, if you haven't seen my first one, I'll definitely put the link for that in the description. Definitely hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you have any questions or comments or anything you want to add to that, definitely leave a comment in the comment section and definitely subscribe. Now, without further ado, let's go ahead and get right into it. The, my second mock draft for the Jacksonville Jaguars. Now, in the first round, I have a selecting tight end Hayden Hurst out of South Carolina. Now, most Jaguar fans should be familiar with this name um, as he is from Jacksonville, Florida. So there's the connection there. And there's been a lot of reports about the Jaguars taking him maybe in the first or second round uh, because the Jaguars actually met with him a couple days back. So the interest is there. The only thing left to figure out is whether or not we pull the trigger. We actually do pull that trigger in the first round. Now, when the Jaguars have invited players uh, before the draft, that's kind of been a, a clue to whether or not we're going to take them or not. But it just, you know, remains to be seen. Hayden Hurst would be a smart pick in the first round because it adds depth to a position that we really need depth at because, you know, we only – signed Austin Safarian Jenkins and Niles Paul in free agency and and uh, we cut Mercedes Lewis so if one of those guys were to go down especially Austin Safarian Jenkins then we're literally left with nothing at tight end so you know targeting a tight end in the first round wouldn't be a bad idea so I have a selecting Hayden Hurst in the first round we look at Hayden Hurst he's a very dynamic player out of South Carolina very athletic he's very fast he can catch pretty much anything that's thrown at him uh, only thing he really has to work on in the NFL is his uh, route running and his, I guess, his ability to get open in certain and tight spaces and uh, trying to read defenses and things like that. So uh, stuff he'll all learn in the NFL. So Hayden Hurst, I have us taking or I have the Jacksonville Jaguars taking Hayden Hurst in the first round. Now, moving on to the second round, I have the Jaguars selecting offensive tackle Orlando Brown out of Oklahoma. Now, Orlando Brown, he's actually a junior. His dad played in the NFL and was a great player for 10 years um, at the same position. So um, he's going to have he has that experience, um, you know, just from learning under his father. His father's passed away now, so he plays the game for his father. And uh, like I said, this guy, he, he's, he's been around football his whole life. So he is truly is the definition of a football player. He's very physical. And he's very big. His only limitations really is his athletic ability. But, you know, if we were to draft him, we can definitely mold him into kind of like how we saw Cam Robinson last year. Uh, he could definitely end up having that kind of impact. Now, it will be interesting to see whether or not he'll compete for a position on the offensive line as far as him and Jeremy Parnell is concerned. Because next year, it looks like Parnell probably won't be back on the team. So that remains to be seen how that will look in camp. But I have the Jacksonville Jaguars selecting Orlando Brown in the second round uh, out of Oklahoma. Now on to the third round. I have the Jaguars selecting quarterback Luke Falk out of Washington State. Now in my first mock draft, I had Luke Falk going in the fourth round. But I've been reading some articles and different reports saying that Luke Falk might actually end up going in the second or third round to like maybe the Patriots or the Saints and teams like that. So I feel like if we're going to target a quarterback, if we're going to get a quarterback, I feel like Luke Falk is the best. I think he's the best quarterback as far as getting one late in the draft. I don't really trust any of the other quarterbacks early, like Mason Rudolph and, uh, you know, guys like that, uh, Matt, Mike White. You know, I don't really trust guys like that. Luke Falk, I've seen him play. He's probably the most accurate quarterback really coming into this draft. So um, uh, if we can develop him and – get him in camp and you know see how he looks you know we'll we'll be um pretty set at uh, the backup quarterback position because if anything was to happen to Blake um you know with all due respect to Cody Kessler you know we need somebody we also need somebody who can uh, come in and be a future franchise quarterback if anything was to go wrong with Blake so I have us taking quarterback Luke Falk in the third round now in the fourth round the 129th overall pick um, I have us taking wide receiver Antonio Callaway out of University of Florida. Now, when you look at Antonio Callaway, yes, the first thing you think of is all the off-the-field off issues and the arrest 
and him not being able to play at Florida for the majority of it because of the off the field issues. Now, if we're going to take a chance on him, we're going to have to target him in the fourth round or later. So that's why I have him going here in the fourth round. Then if we look at last year, when we selected D.D. Westbrook in the fourth round, he had the same off the field issues as well. So Tom Coughlin, I think he he knows what he's doing when, he's, when, when he gets these guys. And I think he thinks that he can make the most out of them and make them into grown men and whatever mistakes they made. Tom Coughlin feels like he can uh, correct those mistakes and get them on the field and have them turn their lives around. Um, you see he drafted Odell Beckham Jr. as well and, you know, the type of chance he took on him. So he's taken chances on wide receivers in the past that we've seen, you know, like we've seen before. So uh, don't be surprised if we pull the trigger on Antonio Callaway in the uh, fourth round um, because, our you know, our wide receiver group, you know, let's be real about it. It's still somewhat unproven to a certain degree. You know, it's still yet, you know, remain to be seen whether or not uh, Marquise Lee can carry the team for the whole year. Uh, you know, he did it last year, but part of that was, you know, he had help from Keelan Cole and D.D. Westbrook, and, and then and the running game was number one in the NFL. So I feel like a little bit more help at wide receiver would be essential. So I have us taking Antonio Callaway in the fourth round. Now I'll skip ahead to the sixth round. I have us take uh, selecting Jordan Whitehead, the safety out of Pitt. Now, Jordan Whitehead actually also played running back at Pitt, too, as well. So, he's a dual threat type of player. He's a true definition of an athlete. Now, he also have some, has some off-the-field issues as well that he needs to address, and which is why he's fallen all the way here to the sixth round. But he's a very dynamic player um, coming out of Pitt. He's always been the type of player who's somewhat been like a ball hawk. Uh, like I said, he played at Pitt, so he played in the ACC. So he played around some de- uh, decent competition as far as that's uh, concerned. So definitely uh, really excited, you know, about him if we do take him um, here in the sixth round. Like I said, he would be a lot higher draft pick. So um, Jordan Whitehead, it would be a steal here late in the sixth round. On to the seventh round where we have two picks. Um, the first one, the twenty, uh, the 230th overall pick. I have us taking the linebacker Matthew Thomas out of Florida State. Now, I've watched Matthew Thomas pretty much the majority of his career, you know, having been a Florida fan. So I've seen uh, Matthew Thomas on on Florida State on several occasions. Um, He's definitely a a really big disappointment uh, coming out of high school. He was expected to be a whole lot better. Now, of course, things uh, play into that um, as far as, like, injuries go and things like that. So, um you know, he's going to have to put in a lot of work if he wants to be, you know, a chance to be a starter, you know, on the Jaguars. But I feel like if we take a chance on him, I think he'll do a decent job of in camp and uh, making the team. You know, Jaguars really do good late in the draft. And this is another guy that um, even though he's fallen, you know, he's probably going to fall this far. Um, he still has the athletic ability and there's some talent somewhere in there. You just have to get it out of him and Hopefully the NFL will be the next step of, um, or hopefully the ex- exposure of the NFL will help him as a player take that next step, and the Jaguars are you know reap the benefits of that. So I have us taking Matthew Thomas here late in the seventh round, uh, with that first seventh round pick, 230th overall, and uh, last but not least, with the last pick, or I'm sorry, with the 247th pick in the seventh round, I have the Jaguars selecting. Defensive tackle Dalen Mack out of Texas A&M. Now, I had him slotted in my first uh, mock draft as well, but I had him going with our first pick in the seventh round instead of the second pick. Very big physical guy, uh, run stuffer. Uh, He definitely, you know, he's a project. He needs some work as far as uh, working on his body, making sure he's in the best shape as far as staying athletic. But if he can uh, get anywhere near you know, in a good enough shape to play in the NFL, he'll be a very dangerous guy. So definitely excited to see who the Jaguars are going to draft here coming up in the next couple weeks on April 25th. And the draft is right around the corner. So can't wait to see how everything is going to work out. Um, definitely subscribe. Is this your first time watching the videos? I will be putting out videos for the Jaguars as the draft continues to get closer. All right. Uh, thank you. This is Jay's Every Sports signing off.